they can get you know clocking in an overtime. <laughs> Hello. Okay. And now Beth Goza talking about Second Life. Oh, okay, so if you already know about Second Life, I apologize, this might be a little bit of a repetitive uh, amount of information. Um, yeah, this is really hard. The whole 15 seconds thing takes too long. So if you don't know about Second Life, keep in mind there's three key elements to Second Life. It's the community, it's the fact that the content is resident created, and it's the fact that there's a marketplace within Second Life. Think of it as the 3D web, think of it as um, wow on crack. Um, Second Life is a metaverse, it's a world. What I have here is a picture of a person sitting at a chess table. Chess is the game. Second Life is the world in which you play the game. So the first thing you should know is Second Life is not a game. There's an engine for resident created content. We call them residents, not players, because you live there. You can make your own stuff. In fact, everything you see in Second Life was made by a resident using 3D building tools similar to AutoCAD, but not quite as sophisticated. You actually own your own intellectual property in Second Life. You own the property rights so much so that if you build something in Second Life, for example, this game Tringo, and turn around and license it to Nintendo, you get the proceeds, not Linden Lab. The creators of Second Life. So basically, what is Second Life? It's real life, but you can fly. <laughs> Which is really cool. Um, I just realized this is kind of a really weird slide deck because it kind of assumes you do know Second Life. So I apologize. It's a 3D virtual world. You download it. It's free. Um, one of the things that I noticed about Second Life is there's three business models that have kind of arisen out of the game, or the world, sorry, in-world um, resident services, um, people who actually do independent contraction, contracts with a specialty, and then those that do business to business services. If you're curious about the growth of Second Life, this slide is from um, August of this year. Uh, by the way, I used to work at Linden Lab, now I work at Microsoft, but I'm still, in, still into Second Life. Um, it's now three times the size of Boston. When I started working there, there were 50,000 residents, now there are over a million residents. So think about that growth. In seven months, they went from 50,000 to a million. 43% are female, which is really cool. When I hang out there, I actually meet a lot of girls. It's awesome. Median age is 32, so these are not the 16 and 18 year olds who are in the elite space. The places are... <laughs> The things that people tend to make money on or they tend to gravitate towards um, are the image of your avatar, the goods, meaning the things you interact with, and then the experiences. People actually get married in Second Life, and yes, the wedding dress costs more than a regular dress in Second Life. Go figure. The way you make money is the Second Life currency is called Linden Dollars. Think of this as a micropayment system. Basically, Linden Dollars are sold and bought on an exchange service because some people don't make anything. They just want to come and hang out and party. So they buy Lindens from these people who are making stuff and selling it and then they turn around and sell it on the exchange and they make money. About four US dollars per thousand Linden. So for example, Eva down here, just a regular person who's good at making stuff bought an Xbox last year because she uh, made money in Second Life. Then you have somebody like Amy Weber who actually did the um, American Apparel store in Second Life, if any of you guys read about that. She's basically charging real dollars for her services. So think about um, the web in 1993 or 1994 when you had to hire somebody to do your website because you didn't know how or you didn't have internal resources. And then finally there's these big companies that are starting to form, Electric Sheep, Millions of Us, Avalon, and they're doing projects with people like NBC, BBC. Okay, so here's the fun part. I own an island <laughs> and my island is called Dork with a J. Dork. And um, out, yes, if you, <laughs> if you know the fake band from the 80s, that's it. And I'm thinking about doing a business in Second Life and that business um, involves throwing parties, virtual parties. They could be theme parties. For example, this was a disco party we threw on my island where everybody got dressed up. We streamed in um, audio of 70s music. We showed videos of things like Saturday Night Fever, and it was a lot of fun. There's also reunions. Think about it this way. There could be people who get together in Second Life who are either just know each other in the real world and are geographically disparate, or they're never going to meet in the real world, but they still want to meet. Think about getting together with your MySpace friends. Okay, in our case, your Orchid friends. I don't know. <laughs> and then birthdays. Birthdays are like huge in Second Life. So basically somebody, you know, made this, sold it for like a hundred lindens. Somebody made that cake. It's taking place on my island. So, you know, the idea was, well, how 
could I, if I wanted to make money off of this, so I was thinking, what would the business model be? Could I rent the island? Could I rent avatars? Could I do things like offer my DJ services or photography? Basically, what I wanted to do tonight was just throw that out there and figure out, A, am I on crack? Um, B, should I do something else? And C, is Partyverse a good domain name? Thank you.